Welcome back. Well, from a strong job market to one that feels a little shaky, here's a look by the numbers. Unemployment in Canada ticked higher in October to 5.7% from 5.5% a month previous. The economy added just 18,000 jobs in the month, the most of those were part-time positions. And while the economy has added an average of 28,000 jobs a month this year, the workforce is growing at an average of 81,000 a month. Meanwhile, wage gains are starting to cool. Average hourly wages were up 4.8% in October from a year before, but off their peak. And layoffs have been continuing. Most recently, Canadian Tire said it would shed 3% of its workforce. That could be part of a weak holiday season. Seasonal job postings are down 30% from a year ago, according to Indeed. But it is also part of a bigger trend. Manulife joined other financial firms this week with layoffs, about 2.5% of its wealth management team. For a long time, we were told Canada's labour market was tight. Remember the nearly 1 million unfilled positions. But those vacancies have fallen steadily, and new job creation is not keeping pace with immigration. Throw in higher wages, making every employee more expensive, and you have to wonder if growing unemployment may not be headed our way. James Orlando is Director and Senior Economist at TD Economics. Thanks for being with us. Absolutely. So let's just start with kind of the state of play. It feels as though we see layoffs all the time now. Uh, of course, some of those may just be normal and some of them may be companies right sizing after overexpansion. What's your take on the health of the jobs market? Yeah, I think when we hear layoffs, it's very common. We've been hearing layoffs for, for years now. Um, and a lot of times when we see the newspapers, there's a lot of sensationalization of what's going on with layoffs. Um, we saw it specifically in the U.S. It's come to Canada now. Um, but when you look at the job market that you mentioned earlier, we keep gaining jobs every month. Now, the question for us is, are these layoffs going to turn into something deeper? Is it going to be something that's going to be more pervasive across various industries? And right now, we're not seeing that just yet. The labor market, as you mentioned, it is still tight. We still have um, almost 700,000 job vacancies out there. Mm -hmm. um, but our view is that this will start to slow. Uh, one of the biggest drivers of, of the employment market and the jobs market, if you convince a, a firm whether they're going to hire uh, anymore, is how are their sales doing? And when you look at how consumers are doing, consumers are starting to pull back on their spending. And so we think that will be one of the indicators to watch for the labor market going forward. And of course, there's a bit of circularity to that, James, because uh, consumers will spend if they themselves have a job and they're secure about the future of that job. Is there what you might call headline risk here? We keep talking about a recession that may be coming and that actually keeps people sitting on their wallets, even though they are still doing OK. Yeah, I think you're seeing that right now. I think that's exactly what's happening. Um, it, when you look at there's jobs available for people, you know, Canadians have record number of jobs right now. Their wages are rising. They're rising faster than inflation right now. Um, they've got a whole bunch of, uh, of pandemic savings that they still haven't spent, um, yet they're starting to pull back on spending. Um, so usually when people have a job and they got money, they will spend money, but that's not happening right now. So we wonder how much that sentiment about the economy is starting to really hit the Canadian consumer right now. And of course, we have seen, as you would expect, a drop off in spending that is related to interest rates. So things that need financing, um, debt of all types, people are kind of cautious about the higher cost of that. Are we seeing then a kind of a commensurate pickup in service spending and entertainment and travel and things that aren't as interest rate sensitive? Uh, we did for sure. Um, any, obviously, anything related to a high interest rate where you need to you know, take out a loan to buy it is going to be uh, heavily debated by a household right now. And we have seen slowing in spending and things that we call uh, durables. So anything you need interest rate to, to get. Um, and obviously, with the summertime, we saw a huge amount of people going to uh, concerts, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, whatever it might be. Um, yeah, all around North America, people were, were going out um, and, and just spending money on services. Um, and when you look at how that's happening now and how that's played out in the fall and heading into the winter months, that spending is starting to slow as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at credit card spending right now, we're seeing it slow. You look at um, how much people are spending going out to restaurants and bars, that's starting to slow. And so we had this, um, this really strong level of spending for quite some time, but it's not just the interest rate side of thing. It's, it's spreading to other areas of, um, of products that consumers buy. So not just the goods, but the services as well. All right, only a few seconds here, but does that lead you to think we have dodged a recession or that there might still be a mild recession, either we're in it already or it's headed our way? 
Well, we're probably not in recession right now. You know, it's hard to get recession when you have job growth uh, running at the clip that you were mentioning earlier. Um, the question is, is that how are Canadians going to react? If Canadians start uh, getting really fearful, start pulling back spending too much, then that re raises the risk of recession. But right now, uh, we are still tracking for a soft landing in Canada, which is really the best outcome we can hope for, given the fact that the Bank of Canada policy rates five percent right now. James, great to have you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. James Orlando is a director and senior economist at TD Economics. Well, for sure, wage growth has been one of the benefits to workers in this inflationary period, many playing catch up after a long period of stagnant increases. But when inflation cools, do wage gains follow? Armin Yanuzan is an economist and fellow on the future of workers at the Atkinson Foundation. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So in this kind of theme that it feels a little shakier on the employment front than it has, although still solid, do you, would you expect to see the sort of strides we've made on wages cooling off as we see interest rates hit their peak here? There's two counterfactuals here. First of all, most of the wage growth has been associated with people at the bottom actually doing better in sectors where job vacancies were extremely high, things like retail and uh, fast food. But now we are seeing that almost all of the growth in job vacancies, and they are still growing, are coming from the care economy. And most of the care economy is controlled by public purse strings, which are very tight. So it's unclear that we're going to see growth from that side. The other side of that story, however, is growing interest in organizing and better gains through uh, private sector collective bargaining than we have seen in decades. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the net is of that story. Do you think that because we've seen uh, businesses have to share some of their cash flow in higher wages, uh, that they will find ways to hire fewer workers? That's always the fear. I mean, that they'll find uh, new investments in technology so that they can, yes, pay their existing workers more, but maybe have fewer jobs. Yeah, that'd be great, actually, if it played out that way. But right now, we are not seeing a huge pace of adoption of technology that is productivity enhancing mm -hmm. and might lead to labor displacement. The type of technological change we are now seeing being adopted is very much labor complementing rather than labor, labor displacing. That could change, but we're just not at that place yet. And there's a lot of companies with deep pockets, but not a lot of the smaller players are investing in any kind of technological change at all. I know you've done a lot of uh, work looking at that care economy and uh, how important it is. I think all of us have sort of woke up to that, especially in pandemic and around the long-term care uh, situation. As we look at this labor market, and as you say, uh, public purse springs are stretched. We have immigration on the other side, um, also kind of not yet crowding uh, the market, but definitely the, the pace of population growth is stronger than the pace of new jobs. Where does the care economy fit into that? Is this an opportunity there or will it be uh, a place where you're going to see a shortfall? Yes and yes. So <laughs> the demographic change that we are going through right now is quite remarkable. And I'm not talking about newcomers. I'm talking about the base case of Canadian born. For uh, birth rates have been dropping for decades, as you know. And uh, the number of boomers that are exiting are not is not dropping. It's accelerating. So we do need more newcomers. They come in two flavors, permanent residents and temporary. And right now, that inflow of that source of population growth is slowing. Uh, if you look at the numbers, I mean, we were talking all about what happened in 2022. We're almost at the end of 2023. So the population isn't growing at the same pace as it was permanently, but it is temporarily. So uh, through migrant workers. So will that be enough to fill in the voids that we need for care as the population ages out of work and into the need for more services? Yep. And the smallest working age cohort that we have seen in half a century is going to need help with raising their kids to the extent that they are choosing to have kids now. So there, there's some really big care economy issues and the degree to which we let the market deliver that. Um, service or that we provide it publicly as a basic service to be able to maximize the potential of a shrinking working age cohort. That's the chapter left to be uh, written as we as we move forward into 2024. And one I know we'll talk about uh, again, Armin. Great to have you for this today. Thank you. Armin Yanuzan is an economist and fellow on the future of workers at the Atkinson Foundation. Coming up, a fall economic update from Ottawa has some people on edge. We'll explore.